Hi, Professor Voza here, and today we are doing the piglet dissection or fetal pig dissection. So here we have our fetal pig. Um, you can see the whole animal. And um, these pigs are called fetal pigs because they're unborn, um, but they're still fully formed. So they were close to being born and they have been removed from uh, the female's womb and then processed to be preserved and then used by uh, for education. So they are not bred for that purpose. They ac actually come from the food industry, at least the mothers. And um, once they're um, having those babies, well, they're not supposed to have and they cannot be used for consumption. So rather than discarded them, discarding them, they are using them um, for educational purposes, well, selling them for educational purposes. All right, so here, here is the pig, here's the whole animal, and we can consider it here an experimental model because we are choosing those um, pigs to um, really see, um, study our own human anatomy. So what do they, what do they have in common with us? They are mammals, <laughs> and of course, uh, these are much smaller than a full-grown human being, but since all their organs are formed, we, can, we will be able to see their appearance, their location, and um, there are some slight differences with humans, but overall it's very, very similar. So what makes this a mammal? What features do you, can you identify that makes this um, animal a mammal. So mammals have, um, as their name indicates, mammary glands. So here we're not going to look for the glands themselves, but we can look for those little nipples they have. You can see them here. They have way more than two. Um, usually we count about 12, 14 of them. And you know that's because they have big little sizes. So these are the mammae, those little structures that we call nipples that you can see. And since we have bilateral symmetry, you can see that they have two rows of those on each side. Okay. Okay. Also, most mammals will have hair and you can see it's very hard here, but they have this pig has hair all over its body already. It's more obvious on the chin. Hairy chin here. Then you can see those long ones sticking out here. Right, so hair, typical of mammals. Um, then you see the animal is fully formed, so the bilateral symmetry is obvious. Um, and we have the eyes that are formed but closed, the ears. The snout is all there, the, the tongue is sticking out. Then if we look at the joints, they're similar to ours. So we have the wrists here, the wrist, the elbow. Then for um, the back, it's a bit tricky because basically this would be their knee here. And then you have the ankle right here. So that means that when they're standing up, like a lot of mammals on four legs, they tiptoe. Since this is the heel here, they're tiptoeing. So if you had to mimic how they walk, you would have to tiptoe um, to walk like them. If we open the eye, we will see that we have like, it's very hard to open actually. <laughs> Here, we have this membrane on the eyes. So you don't get directly to the eye. You have this nictitating membrane that is very reduced in humans. Then they have their little eyelashes. Now also, if we check out the mouth, we have to be careful when we uh, open that mouth because they already have little teeth. Not sure you can see those. 
there are some little teeth right there and they're pretty sharp so we'll have to be careful um, those pigs are born with teeth um, now the first thing we need to do before we uh, proceed with the dissection is to sex the animal to know whether it's a male or a female so those mammy are not gonna help you because males and females have the mammy what we need to do is go towards the tail here you can see their little piggy tails and determine from there whether it's a male or a female so what we can see is I remove all this we have the anus right under the tail and we have this structure here that's the, a female and this is the urogenital papilla so in this it's a it's a small animal so it's not very easy to see but it's this inside the structure here we have two openings one that goes to the vagina and the other one, which is the opening to the urethra. So the opening to the urethra is more ventral. It's going to be here. And the opening to the vagina is going to be right behind it. So these are female. This is a female. And um, here we have the umbilical cord sticking out. So don't take, take that for a male part. Remember, these are unborn. So they've been removed from the womb and the, the umbilical cord has been sectioned. So this is what you see here. Um, okay. So the first dissection we're gonna proceed with is to expose structures that are in the throat of the animal, the pharynx. We cannot look at those structures just by opening the mouth of the animal because it is very rigid right now and it won't open wide enough for us to see those structures. So I'm gonna proceed by making a very large smile to this pig by cutting through the cheeks here on each side. And um, of course, I'm going to get to cut through the um, jaws as well. But since those pigs are still very young, it's mostly cartilage and our dissection tools do a good job going through that. So it should not be an issue at all. So for this first dissection, I like to um, use the scalpel. So this is the scalpel here. And I don't yet tie the pig on to, onto the tray because I like to move it around so I can really uh, cut well without turning everything upside down and myself are <laughs> included. So I'm going to open the mouth of the pig to see what I'm doing because I want, as I mentioned, to want, I want to cut through the cheek. The scalpel is very sharp, so the blade the sharp part here has to face towards the outside. I don't want it to face like this or inside the mouth because I might cut structures that I need to see afterwards. So I'm going to open the mouth so I can see what I'm doing when I'm cutting and cut through that cheek with my blade facing out. So it's not a very pleasant <laughs> part to cut through the cartilage. It's a bit hard. It resists. I'm going to start the other side. And uh, the skin is very thick in those uh, animals, plus it's preserved, so it's even tougher now. Right. 
right through that cartilage. So you can see that now the mouth opens a lot more. I'm still careful because I don't want the tissue, the different parts to rip off and then be damaged. So I'm going to take my time and work through all those structures holding the mouth together. So that jawbone is resisting a little bit. So now the mouth is open, but it's still not yet where I want it to be. So I keep going. And I want to see those structures that are really in the throat. Um, and these are the glottis and the, you'll see the epiglottis is the first one we'll see. Don't want to crack this. I do not like the feel of the whole mouth cracking open. So I'm watching for these teeth here because I keep feeling them <laughs> uh, poking through my gloves and I don't want them to um, break the gloves and have this um, fluid, which is a preservative solution, even if it's rinsed, there's still a bit of that formaldehyde in here and I don't want that in contact with my hands. So I wear my gloves and I'm careful they're not punctured. All right, so now I see the structures I want. I'm just gonna clean up a little bit so you get a good view as well. This bone is a bit in the way. All right. All right, so ha this is what we want, this big joker smile. The poor little pig has been completely disfigured from the get-go. So what do we see? Here we have those typical ridges here. Let me dry this out so it stops shining. So the... Um, you can feel this, it's very tough. There's cartilage behind all this and those ridges. Um, so this is the hard palate, the roof of the mouth, the hard palate. Then there's a part here where there's no longer cartilage behind and no more ridges. This part is the soft palate. So soft palate, hard palate. And be careful with the spelling of that word, palate. It's P-A-L-A-T-E. Here we have the tongue, also know how to spell the tongue. The teeth, we saw them already, They're right here. And the structures I was really getting to, I was getting to are this little structure sticking out here, epiglottis, epi out, right? So epiglottis is the structure that sticks out. And then there's an opening in that little flap which is the epiglottis, there's an opening. I'm putting my probe in there and that is the glottis. So epiglottis is the whole flap, glottis is the opening in it. Where does that lead? This leads to the trachea and the trachea, if I close the mouth of the pig, is going to be here. That's your windpipe. It's right here. So at some point we'll get to see it too. Now, if I keep opening the mouth of the pig, we can also see that in the soft palate, there's an opening. I'm putting the probe in here. There's this opening here, which basically leads to the nasal cavity, which is that space here between the nostrils, right? Here, up above the roof of the mouth. And then it opens right here in the pharynx. Then behind the epiglottis, 
there's also an access there and here that leads to the esophagus so what do we have in the pharynx going on we have the crossing of the airways air that is um, taken in is going to travel in the nasal cavity go into the pharynx and then it has to go in the glottis then to the trachea that will take that air to your lungs but if the animal is eating when it swallows that food should not go in the airways because that makes you choke or the pig will choke too so this food has to go in the esophagus which is right behind the trachea and each time we swallow the epiglottis covers the glottis therefore the access to the trachea is closed and the food or the liquid that is swallowed is going to go directly in the esophagus right behind so let's zoom on this oh, we can't. these structures Now we close the mouth and we will want our pig to stay put in the tray, the dissection tray, uh, since we're going to proceed with incisions here in the neck first. So we can see the, some of the structures I just mentioned. And then we're going to proceed with opening the thoracic and the abdominal cavity. So I'm going to tie the pig to the tray so it can stay. Um, the pins will not be strong enough to secure the pig onto that pan. So that's why we use string. Eventually, we can use pins to keep the, the um, incisions open, but usually it's not needed much on such big animals. So for that, we need two pieces of string. Um, okay, that should be enough one we're gonna tie around the wrist or even it can go up um, as long as it doesn't move too much and you don't have to try this here but making knots with gloves is really no, no fun <laughs> so then we go around the pan like you just saw me do that put the string around the pan and then I get to the other front limb and now I'm going to tie that. So you can make a knot but usually I just go around several times and then I adjust the other side as well. Positioning the pig. So that's the part where the gloves get in the way, but we can't remove them there. So that I did for the front and same for the back. So then my pig is nicely secured on um, the tray. So more string please. probably taking way more than I need but I don't like to not have enough of that string. Let's go and get some things. we have the dogs coming to check out what's going on <laughs> right so all right so now we have what we want a nicely secured pig on a dissection tray and i'm going to proceed with an incision right here 
Again, I'm gonna use the scalpel and I have to cut skin. So um, I want to just cut the skin and the muscles or the, a bit of fat tissue underneath, but I don't want to cut anything that's underneath that because we want to look at it. So we have to be careful. We are going to look for um, an organ called the thymus that is really close to the, the skin. It's close to the surface. So we don't want to damage that. We want to see it first. So the incision should go from that little, it looks like a pimple with hair. So we can go here from the chin down to about between the two front legs here. Um, so cut like that and then make windows so we can open um, the whole area. So I'm going to start like this. See, I'm not going too deep, just cutting skin and lifting it. So I'm sure that I'm just cutting skin and what nothing that's below. Just trying to make sure I'm in the middle. This is no, um, <laughs> uh, human surgery. I'm sure that would be pretty bad for the patient. It's not cosmetic either, so the pig will not complain about the fact that we're not exactly in the middle. Okay, so here we see the different um, tissues we're cutting. Here is the skin. As I mentioned, it's, it's not a very thin skin. It's quite thick. Then we see connective tissue and some muscles. I'm gonna make this incision on the side so I can start making a little flap. Here. And I like to lift and cut. So it's almost like you're skinning the animal. Then I can make a flap here as well. Sometimes in this area, we can see the salivary glands. Um, if we are lucky, maybe it will be exposed. Let's see. So notice it's not bloody, it's uh, all preserved. There's uh, no smell either of um, anything meaty or animal or decaying. It's all smelling mostly of um, paint. So it's, it's chemical uh, and that's the formaldehyde or whatever mixture they used. Mm. So I don't want this to close each time. That's why I keep going here to really have this flap staying wide open. All right, this. Same thing on the other side. This one is coming back to bother me. So if you hear little noises, don't worry, it's just my pets being curious about what I'm doing right now, having little snacks. I think they want to be heard and seen. Okay, so I got lucky because <laughs> the thymus, I can see a part of it is right there already. And I'll show that to you. Let me get this out of the camera's way. Okay. So here we have uh, cut just 
quite superficially and we can already see some structures even though everything is the same color it's not always easy um, to know what we're looking for so here i'm just moving muscles um, out of the way and there's like here you can see a little structure and it continues down below that's the thymus so that's one side of it here and you see there's some clear connective tissue that i'm um, breaking just with tweezers it's really weak it's like loose connective tissue so that's what i'm doing so i can expose this, this thymus All right, so we see it here. So the thymus is a, a, a strange gland um, that is pretty large in um, young animals, even young kids, you know, children. <laughs> and um, it will become smaller as we get older. Same thing for the pigs. It's uh, actually involved in immunity. And since we're building a lot of our immunity in childhood, it's going to be very large at that time and then um, decrease in size as we get older. So here we see the thymus. It has a V shape, but it's hard to see here. Um, it goes like a bit of a V around the neck. It even goes down into the thoracic cavity and sits a little bit on the heart. So like a V like this. Um, so you see the connective tissue here, the very clear membrane holding everything together. And that's what I'm, this is muscle that I'm moving. All right, so we're getting there nicely. Might fast forward this uh, dissection because it takes a long time when we want to make it nice. Okay, so we see most of that thymus right now. Here it is with different lobes, as you can see. It's still one piece, but it has several lobes. We see two lobes here, then there's another one right here and here. Okay, so that's the thymus. T-H-Y-M-U-S, like thyme us. Now we want to um, expose a gland that you've probably heard of before, and that's the thyroid, another gland, and it also starts with T-H-Y, so T-H-Y-R-O-I-D, thyroid. For that, I just have to gently separate the tissue here and open. And I'm gonna see immediately the thyroid, it's a darker gland. It's about the size of a pea on these animals. A little pea size and it's roundish. So there it is. Not sure this is very obvious here. There's the thyroid right here. Now I'm gonna keep cleaning up and I might just get rid of some of that thymus and thyroid because the thyroid is sitting right on the trachea and that's what I want to expose now. So I'm gonna keep playing around well, teasing with the tweezers just to get to the cartilage that makes the trachea the windpipe and the voice box which is right here it's pretty large i can feel it so that's one thing also when you dissect you can feel different um, textures just through the the tools you're using so now i feel it's pretty tough and it's hard resistant that's cartilage and it's white typical of cartilage also so i'm just going to clean up so you can see this voice box Called the, we don't use voice box, 
on testing here. <laughs> We're gonna use the word larynx. L I sorry L A R Y N X larynx. So here it's exposed, but that's not the best to do. What we want to get through is the trachea. So I'm gonna have to get the thyroid out of the way. So I can expose the trachea here. And I'm gonna open a little more the chest cavity so I have more workspace. And here I have the sternum, which is that cartilage that binds the ribs together to close the chest cavity. So that's just what I'm going to open more so we get a better view of that trachea. Again, the blade upwards. So I'm not cutting too deep. Here I'm just removing a oops, little piece of cartilage. Yeah, so it can yeah, that should be good. Hope you can see that. Right, so here we have the good, the good, the typical appearance of the trachea with the rings. I'm gonna take a picture of that so you can see it even better. So this thyroid is resisting me. What does the thyroid do before I remove it? The thyroid is involved in um, your metabolism, and that's what you why you pro you probably heard of it in the context of hyper. Thyroidism, when it's too active, basically it produces too many hormones uh, uh, for your metabolism and it's going to be, your metabolism is going to be affected and it's going to go too fast. So even though you're not changing anything to your habits, you might start to lose weight and feel very tired because you're burning everything fast. And then there's also the opposite, the hypothyroidism and hypo means it's under um, it's working under the level it should work at. And then um, in that case, you'll be putting on weight even though you didn't uh, change anything to your lifestyle. And that's because your metabolism is slowed. This is a gland that works with iodine. And that's why many times in the tr treatments, depending on what you have, hyper or hypo, you will either need some iodine supplements or you will need to avoid iodine. And iodine can be found in natural salt, uh, seafood, of course. So you'll have to watch for that. So here we have the trachea with the rings. Trachea. Actually, as I run the tweezers against the trachea, I can feel the rings of cartilage. Why make a trachea of cartilage? Well, remember, this is your windpipe that takes the air to your lungs. So it has to be open all the time. It cannot be a soft tissue that would collapse. Um, and that you would need to open each time you breathe air in or out. So it stays open all the time and uh, can have air going through it, uh, inside of it. Then you have the voice box used to make sounds here. That's still cartilage. It looks like a larger part of the trachea without um, the rings. So that's the larynx. Now I want to look for the esophagus. I mentioned that the esophagus is right behind the, um, the trachea. This esophagus is more on the left side. Of course, I'm talking about the left side of the pig. So it's going to be somewhere here. It's slightly behind the trachea and on the left of it. And it's going to lead to the stomach, which is in the abdomen. And it's all, also on the left side. So I'm going to expose this esophagus so you can also see it. So right side, left side. And it's a soft pipe that has um, smooth muscle. So it can move whatever you swallow down to your stomach within about seven seconds for uh, a solid uh, material fluids will go way faster. And that movement of the smooth muscle, as you learned, 
is not voluntary. That means you're not conscious of it. It's a wave-like contraction, and it's called peristalsis. All right, so here you should be able to see it. I'm going to turn the pig around so you get the this view Oops. from this side. So here, I'm going to try to not have my fingers in the way. Here we have the trachea and right here we have the esophagus. Let me try again <laughs> from here. No. <laughs> Okay, so here we have the esophagus right on, on the, this is really not, right here, trachea, esophagus, the left side of the animal. Esophagus is a soft pipe. You can see it right here. It's not as large as the trachea, but it can expand. So right here is the esophagus and here is the trachea. I was mentioning the salivary glands and there's one right here. You can see it right here. little structure um, I'm not gonna expose the other one but yeah if ever you do a piglet dissection know that if you see those little structures here uh, there are three pairs of salivary glands so you're just looking at one of those here not a pair but one of them okay so now we're going to um, keep on dissecting I'm going to open the thoracic cavity let me go back to the original positioning here um, thoracic cavity then abdominal cavity however there's the diaphragm between um, the thoracic and the abdominal cavity and I don't want to cut this diaphragm I want to see it first so the way we uh, dissect is we have to make like a little secured belt around here between the thorax which ends with the ribs and the abdomen to see this uh, diaphragm which is right after the last rib and before the abdomen uh, it's a muscle that is considered a respiratory muscle as it helps uh, when it contracts fill up your lungs and also empty them when it um, relaxes so here we have the umbilical cord that also will cut around this umbilical cord. We'll keep it there, especially if it's a male pig. We usually want to uh, not destroy this part because the penis is right here on the belly. That's where most mammals will have their penises attached to the belly here and opening right here below the umbilical cord um, that is still present here. So I'm gonna gently cut more skin. And what I like to do first is open, I'm gonna go the other way because I feel like we can see better. The, um, the sternum is very, very obvious and protruding here. So that's a, a nice little uh, set point for you to know where you are at. And I like to open the thoracic cavity first so I can see what I'm doing regarding the diaphragm where it should be. Uh, also the heart is very close underneath the sternum so we have to be careful. This is mostly cartilage so it's easy to section with the scalpel. As soon as I section it, I like to lift it up so I don't cut 
the heart. There we go. So can already see some brown coloring here. That's the heart already. So I'm gonna remove that piece. And now go towards the side so I can start seeing what I'm doing. All right. So I'm cutting ribs now. So I'm getting lower and lower and I'm going to get in the area of the diaphragm. So I'm just moving here, you can see I'm holding the ribs, some ribs, and I'm going to go sideways now to make sure that I'm not cutting the diaphragm that goes across. There's still a rib here. like I'm gonna get the cat food award so lots of connective tissue holding everything together it's that very clear tissue that you see everywhere um, now I need to go do the same thing the other side Really careful, I don't want to cut anything. I want you to see the best intact organs. So, as you see from here, the you can see everything is attached to the ribs with that um, clear connective tissue. And that's what I'm gently breaking out. I'm going sideways and down. So my rib cage is opened, still a lot attached to the bones here. Uh, I can gently cut that. Okay. So let me not use the scalpel too much as I might just destroy something. So here I'm going to use the tweezers to break the attachments here. Okay. And as I look inside, I can see the diaphragm. So here you can already see the diaphragm. So it really goes across and separates the thoracic cavity from the abdomen. So I'm good. I didn't cut it. And I'm just going to cut underneath it now so I can keep going um, and open the abdomen. And I have to be careful in the abdomen. There's no bones. So I will, um, if I go too deep, I will definitely destroy something right underneath the skin. Mm. 
good. So I'm gonna proceed downwards and around the umbilical cord. So I'm right in the middle here and then just lifting up the skin. Then I'm gonna go around each side of this umbilical cord here as if I want to pull it out and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. There's gonna be a big blood vessel right here. That's okay, we can section it. You can see that blood vessel, umbilical vein or artery. So that I will cut as well, it's okay. There we go. So I can go further down on each side. And I'm careful because right there, attached to this whole structure, is the urinary bladder. And I don't want to cut it. Right, so this is the biggest part. Now I'm gonna clean up, open, make a nice dissection. And you can see lots of organs immediately after I opened the abdomen. So again, I'm going to make flaps, my little windows. There's a lot of fluid in there. The fixative so that everything is preserved so we also see dried blood that's brownish now and a bit all over the place but it shouldn't bother us to um, in our observations open this a little more yeah. let that fluid come out a little and I like to clean up so that we see the we don't have like all that blood covering organs that we want to observe. You can either do it with paper or with one of the pipettes like this. So if you have an assistant, it's nice to have the assistant sucking out all that fluid <laughs> as you dissect. Okay. So just to show you, oops, my little pig is moving around what I did from all angles here so we opened the chest cavity I still need to clean that out we made a belt to preserve the um, diaphragm and now we opened also the abdominal cavity and we also made sure we went around the umbilical cord so we could keep the urinary bladder, which is right here, intact. So I'm gonna go on and keep opening this uh, thoracic cavity. And we're gonna look at the different organs right there. So thoracic cavity, um, we like to say chest or rib cage. That's what we can see, ribs. And I'm moving them out of our way since they are right there to um, protect the organs underneath that we want to look at. 
because I'm always making those windows. Oops, everything is flying out. And removing some connective tissue so we see the organs. Okay. So now it looks a bit blurry. <laughs> And what I want to show you here is the rest of the thymus. So I'm going to open the top of the chest cavity. Sometimes we just have to crack everything a little bit. There. If you've ever seen um. <laughs> surgery thoracic surgery they really crack the ribs open and i believe that when you wake up from the surgery you must, must feel a lot of pain afterwards um so here we are with our thoracic cavity opened and i'm going to point out to the um, organs so our thyroid is back here remember here's the trachea um the thymus we still have it um, around here so it's here and then on the other side remember it's a v-shaped gland and it sits also on the heart so we can see it here as well um, and i'm just gonna remove more connective tissue that's holding all that together yeah so a big thymus because this is a young animal so oops, that's a piece of lung but here right this piece here all this right here is the thymus and as the animal becomes um, older there will just be a little portion of it left most of it will retract after it has the animal has built its immunity or the human being as well so now what do we see we have the lungs in here so they're not completely identical to uh, each other we have two lungs and they don't have the same number of lobes, the lobes being those little portions of the, the organ. So here we have the right lung. We see it again here. So you see three lobes, one, two, and then there's one really deeper in the back. And on the left side, we also have the left lung. See a big piece of it here, tinier part right here, and then a second lobe that's more dorsal and lower. Now um, I'm just going to remove that thymus that's sitting on the heart. So you can see that the heart is sitting in a pouch, this clear pouch here. I broke some of it and I'm breaking it again. So this is a clear pouch called the pericardium. It's um, filled with fluid, a lubricant, that uh, prevents the heart from tearing because it's beating all the time it limits friction and therefore tearing so it's an important structure that pericardium but to see the heart you need to remove that pericardium so that's what i'm doing along with removing the thymus that we don't need to see here anymore Kind of strong membrane. All right, I'm gonna take the heart out of that. There we are. Cute big heart for a big a little pig like that. So this heart. I'm going to try to make it nice. When we look at this heart, so here you're looking at the right side and the left side of the heart. 
So here we have the, ven the right ventricle, right here, this part. And then you see this darker part here, this, that can separate actually. That's the right atrium. It's a little darker here, this right atrium. And this is the right ventricle. How do we know this, is the, this part is the right ventricle? We have the coronary vessels right here. You can see this darker uh, line. That's the coronary vessels. And that limit, delimits the right and the left ventricle. So the heart is slightly twisted to the left and we see more of its right side. And then the piece, parts of the left side, since it's turned towards the back. So here we see a big part of the left ventricle. And then we need to move the heart a little bit to see the left atrium here, this part. Now, since we're looking from here, we can see um, the diaphragm. You can see it from above here, all that, there's a separation. I cannot get to the other side here. Here, I can't go to the other side. If we look from below, you can nicely see this diaphragm. So the diaphragm is a muscle, um, skeletal type of muscle. And if you like to eat meat, it's actually, uh, eaten, uh, taken from uh, beef, and it's called skirt steak. It's very uh, tasty, very fatty also, and it's called skirt steak. And if you look at it, it's a very long piece of meat. Right below this, um, I'm not going to call it skirt steak because right now we don't feel too hungry. Um, this diaphragm, and be careful with the spelling of the word diaphragm, it's not an easy one. Right below it, that's now the abdominal cavity. And we see the largest organ here, which is the liver, huge liver. This is the um, umbilical vessels that we cut. So don't pay too much attention to that. It wouldn't be present in an adult animal. So here, huge liver also made of different lobes, but it's still one organ. And um, if we lift the right side of the liver, we should see the gallbladder because the gallbladder stores bile, but the bile itself is made by the liver and the gallbladder is considered to be a part of the liver. So it's a little pouch. On many animals, it will appear nice and green. Whoops, I broke the liver. And not on this animal, but it's a pouch right here. Sometimes I can easily separate it, yeah, right here. But this one is not green, unfortunately. It's nicer when it's greenish and it has bile in there, so I'm not gonna poke it. But um, this is the gallbladder on the right side. So usually we have to lift the liver to look at it. Now let's look at our pig from this view. It's fine. So we're looking at the left side, oops, here. A lot is going on on the left side. So we have to locate the stomach there, the spleen, all that is on the left side. There's this, um, so the liver, and then there's this flap that looks like a tongue a little bit. That is the spleen. It's only on the left side, there's only one of them, and it's the spleen. Also involved in um, immunity, um, fighting infections, and also um, removing um, your, blood, your red blood cells after about three, four months. Once, they, once they're too old, they're going to be degraded, recycled in there, the spleen. You can live without a spleen, so it can be removed um, if it's causing issues in adults. So the spleen is right here. I'm going to push it on the side. It's attached to the other organs. And then we have the stomach. This pig has a lot of blood. 
the stomach is on the less on the left side right below the liver and then it it's covered by the spleen before you move it out of the way just gonna do this here and we have the stomach right here again usually it appears mostly whitish or grayish but this pig has a lot of dried blood all over the place so everything is kind of red so here's the stomach and you see it's a big pouch we can sometimes open it to see the uh, typical appearance of the stomach lining which has lots of um, infoldings and that you know is for more surface area Maybe we'll do that afterwards. Let's keep going. Spleen is in here, stomach. Then we have the intestines. So we have small and large intestine to identify. Let me turn this way. If we look here, we have this large intestine all coiled on the left side. That's for pigs. For humans, it's not like that. It's going to go across the abdomen, the abdominal cavity. For the pigs, it's really... Um, coiled mostly on one side and that's the large intestine it's larger in diameter but it's shorter in length the small intestine is right there and that's a lot of it it's a very long pipe and it's narrower than the large intestine so a lot of it sometimes we take the time to unfold it and you will see it coming out and turn you can really go several times around the pig with it it's so long so large intestine small intestine so food that is swallowed goes to, your, to the esophagus esophagus is mostly on the left side it leads it crosses the um, thoracic cavity to go to the stomach in the abdominal cavity from the stomach then we go in the small intestine then the large intestine and then it has to be eliminated whatever we didn't digest and we will see the last part of the large intestine, the rectum, and then it leads to the anus, the anal canal. And when you lift those intestines up, you usually see this green pipe. <laughs> and that is the last portion of the large intestine going straight down to the anus right here. Okay. So now there's one organ that's not easy to find, um, and that's the pancreas. So we have to look for the pancreas now. And the pancreas is more dorsal, more towards the back. So what we have to do is lift the stomach and go look for it underneath the stomach and in the back. And I see it here because I know what I'm looking for. So um, it is whitish or grayish here there's intestine around it but i can see it right here so i'm gonna try to expose it as much as possible and it has a very weird um, texture and appearance um, it looks a little bit like fat or styrofoam <laughs> it's not all smooth um, when you get a close look at it. So it goes a bit across like that. I'm not gonna pull on it because it's it's really not a strong organ. It's not very uh, resistant to anything. So we have to be careful when handling it. So it's right here. We see it here and right here. Pancreas. So what does the pancreas do? It has many important functions. You know that it produces, secretes insulin. That insulin goes in the blood and um, gives the signals to different uh, cells and to our liver to take the glucose out of the blood. Um, so that's going to lower the glucose in your blood. But it also produces another hormone called glucagon and that does the opposite of insulin. And glucagon basically signals to the cells and the liver to release the glucose back in mostly to the liver to release the glucose back in the blood so that your blood glucose will go back up if you're in between meals not eating you're not gonna pass out because 
there's going to be release of glucose by the liver in your bloodstream. Um, then it also produces, this pancreas is also producing enzymes and these digestive enzymes will be put into the small intestine. And those enzymes will allow to digest proteins, lipids, more carbohydrates. Um, so very important. Along with the bile, I didn't mention the function of bile, bile is going to be made by the liver, but then it's going to be put in, stored in the gallbladder and then delivered in the small intestine as well. And bile is not an enzyme, it's called an emulsifier. So it's important to uh, mix the fats from your food with the rest, which is mostly aqueous, it's water-based. So those fats were just sitting on top of everything until then. But once you add the bile, it can be mixed up with the rest and enzymes can now get to the fats and break them down. So important function to dig for digestion of fats. So it's, it emulsifies them and then enzymes can attack the fats. Okay, so now we want to look at the urinary system and I will have to clean this pig before I do anything, since it's so bloody. Okay, so I'm back. Just to rinse this little um, animal to remove all the dried blood that was not very nice to look at. And it did some good. So we can better see the pancreas right here. and the stomach, so right this pouch, and then the pancreas in the back below the stomach, so it's right here. So now we're gonna proceed, as I was mentioning, we're gonna go look at the kidneys. The kidneys are very dorsal, so very close to the spine, and we need to lift up all those intestines and all those abdominal organs to see the kidneys. Sometimes we cut them off, but I don't feel like doing that right now. So we can see the kidneys right here. There's one here and the other one a little higher on the right side. It's right here, huge huge kidneys. So I'm going to expose them since they're also, you see, covered with all that connective tissue. I'm going to take the pointy tweezers and just work around the kidneys. Mostly doing it from the outside here because there are the ureters so one ureter per kidney that I don't want to damage I want to be careful we have two so we have two chances if we mess one up we have a second one to try on and we can see those little structures on the kidneys here the adrenal glands so here oops that's the sorry <laughs> the pancreas again. I'm going to move it up. But once we expose the kidneys, we can see those little structures on top, like little hats. All right, so that kidney is a little more visible. And I'm going to show you the ureter. So urine is formed in the kidneys. They filter the waste out of the blood. And then that urine has to go to the urinary bladder. So we have to be careful. We can't say just bladder. We have to say either gallbladder or urinary bladder to make sure we're not mixing up those two bladders. All right. So here, we can see from coming out of this left kidney, We can see here a, a white pipe right here. 
and I'm following it. And that's the ureter, the left ureter. So this I'm following here, goes right there, and then it goes under those structures. Mm -hmm. And then it gets here. right here and it goes into the urinary bladder so kid, left kidney ureter left ureter then it and it leads inside the bladder which is this whole structure here same thing on the right side so ureters go to the urinary bladder and then we can't see it here we'll have to open more this urinary bladder empties through the urethra, there's only one of them, one urethra, and that opens on the urogenital opening right here to void the urine. So now since we're in that area, we can see uh, reproductive organs. I hope I didn't damage them. So I can see here, there, they were just coiled. So this is a female and we see the ovary. It wants to hide for some reason. It looks like a little uh, ribbon here. It's better on this side. Come really close. So here we have the ovary and I'll point to it right here. Then we have the fallopian tube right here, that whole structure that is kind of folded. You can see it right here. And then same thing on so right ovary and right fallopian tube. And then here we have um, same on the left. So the left ovary and it's kind of tiny right here. I don't know why it's folded like that. And then the fallo fallopian tube and everything meets in the, those fallopian tubes meet in the center. They go be a little uh, down furthermore and it becomes the uterus. So we also use uh, other words than fallopian tubes. We also use the word aviduct, which means the, the path, the duct for the eggs, for the ovum. Um, so ovary, aviduct, right oviduct left ovary, left aviduct, and then they both go in the uterus. We cannot see it here. We have to open uh, the perfect girdle. So for that, we will have to cut more bone. So now that we've seen uh, our urinary bladder, I'm going to separate it from our umbilical cord. So I can cut that. And all right, so I left the urinary bladder right here, and we can cut in the middle. It's in my way. Okay, so I haven't touched the bone yet, but I'm getting there and I want to be always very careful. So there's the urogenital papilla right here, which gives me an indication of where I should find the urethra, uterus, vagina. So now I'm getting through bone very gently. And 
and I can see a soft white pipe already right here so I'm being careful that's the urethra okay so enough of the scalpel now we have to be careful okay Moving all that. So here's our urinary bladder. And then you can see the urethra right here, leading to the urogenital opening. So I want to see um, the uterus and um, the vaginas, and they're right behind that urethra. So I'm gently separating that urethra from the rest since everything is bundled up with connective tissue I just want to break through that because we and see through, through it. Connective tissue everywhere. Okay. okay, so here I can see again what I was showing you before, which are the oviducts, so ovaries, they're sticking out here, oviduct, and then I can see them here again, where it becomes the uterus or body of the uterus and then below that there's no clear obvious lim limit here it becomes the vagina right behind the urethra and that also leads to the urogenital opening so we just saw the entire reproductive system of this little uh, female fetal pig okay so remember, these are unborn pigs and the bladder is not yet where it should be. It's still attached to um, the umbilical cord. So that can throw you off. Usually you will see it on one side like that or the other side because it depends on what, um, how it was dissected or moved around. Here we have a male. And uh, the males have, um, so this one has been opened already, but if we look at the back to sex them before opening them, we see the difference with the female, where there is just a tail, the anus, but no opening in that, no other opening in that area here. There is, however, a lot of skin, if I put it back together here, so you see also it's bulging, and that's the scrotum that's where the testes are if they're already descended they're going to be in the scrotum the scrotum is several there are three different layers of their skin and um, other tissues below that and that holds the testes away from the rest of the body so they can be at a slightly cooler temperature than the body temperature and that's the best temperature for the formation of sperm cells now the penis um since that's where the um, that's going to be the organ of copulation, but also where the urethra is um, for voiding urine. That is on the belly that has been already opened, but we kept the umbilical cord. And here we have, right here, the umbilical cord. Oops. And then the penis is right here. It's a bit hard to see because the animal is very small. And there's a little opening right here. And that's the opening to the urethra. And actually, if we feel here, we can actually feel the penis. It's um, kind of cartilaginous, so it's easy to feel uh, right there, um, right under the urinary bladder, which is right here, still attached to the umbilical cord. So here's the penis with the opening, the urogenital opening. Um, so here, let's look at the male reproductive system from um, the inside. So for what we can review quickly, uh, here we have the kidney, well, 
um, the left kidney here, then the ureter, ureter here, and as we follow it, we know that the ureter will go then in the urinary bladder. Then this bladder will uh, lead to the urethra, through which the urine will be voided. That urethra is in the penis now. That's different from the females, which had them the, their urethra um, in the perfect gold girdle here. Now that urethra is in the penis, which is right here. So we're going to expose the penis. For that, I have to separate the bladder from the abdominal skin. Okay, and also that umbilical, that piece of umbilical cord. Let's see. 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 We can see the white penis here. Okay, so just trying to make it very obvious so you get a good view. Right here. Right. There we go. Here we have the whole penis now completely exposed and out of the skin and muscle layers. Okay, so there it is. The penis, that's just here. And then the urinary bladder right here. So what else do we have to see for the males? And usually that's what gives you the most trouble, the male reproductive system. It's hard, it can be difficult to identify, so you need to practice a lot and hard to spell. <laughs> so let's look at what we have here. We have um, no ovaries. That's where we would find the ovaries and the oviducts or fallopian tubes right here for the female. We don't have that here. We do see, however, um, those two structures here going upwards. These are the spermatic cords and they contain blood vessels and nerves. And um, so they go for the blood supply and, and ner bigger nerves up here. And then towards the bottom, the rear of the animal, they're going um, to the testes, and that's the supply of blood and the nerves for those structures. So spermatic cords, so they go upwards, and then here we have like, it looks like a little bridge across the um, urinary bladder, and these are actually, this is the vas deferens, the left one, there's the right one here. So they're called plural vasa deferentia, Singular is vas deference, and it's two words, vas deference. And um, you've probably heard of those structures when you hear about a vasectomy, when a uh, male no longer wants to have um, children, they will get the vas deference, the vasa differentia, uh, they say cut or tied, um, and that will prevent the sperm cells from getting into the urethra because that's where the vasa differentia go. They go in the urethra, which is in the penis here. So the sperm cells are made in the testes that I'll show you. Then they will mature in other structures that we call epididymidis or one epididymis. And I'll show that to you as well. Then they travel in the vasa differentia, the two. That leads them to the urethra 
in the penis and that's when they can be expelled those sperm cells for um, during copulation to fertilize eggs of a female and of course females can also have their tubes tied but they're not the vasa differentia they don't have that they have the ovidox or fallopian tubes so these are the ones that would be tied and they will still make eggs like the male would still make sperm cells but those cannot go further and um, those eggs will be not, um, they will not go into the tubes where they should be fertilized. They will just stay near the ovaries. All right, so let's look for the testes of this pig. I started cutting without showing you. Um, so the, um, we have to go in the scrotum. That's where the testes already descended, so I could feel them beforehand. And I opened the scrotum a little bit here. I'm gonna continue doing that. It's like two pouches. So I'm opening the left one here and I can pull out, you can see something pretty large here. Now we see um, <laughs> the internal layers of the scrotum so that we can't we still cannot see the testes but they're right in here so if i open you can see one already so i'm gonna remove all the scrotum or scrotal sac actually we should say sacs because there's so many layers just opening that all the way I did cut the testis a little bit. <laughs> so now we can separate the scrotum from the rest. And what do we see here? Okay. So there's the testis, I did nip it a little bit, it's cut a bit, so it should be one piece here. Then there's a little structure on top of it, like, um, looks like a little hat <laughs> uh, surrounding parts of the testis, and that's the epididymis. So one testis is spelled I-S, T-E-S-T-I-S, one testis, but if you're um, mentioning two, it's testes, T-E-S-T-E. <laughs> a little bit like hypothesis and hypotheses. So singular testis, sing plural testes. Um, and epididymis, that's a hard word to spell. So really check it out. I see it misspelled a lot of time, even online. They uh, spell it epididymus with a US at the end when it's IS at the end. Um, so be careful with that word. Epi, E-P-I, didymus. So be careful, there's a Y in there as well. So uh, check out that spelling of epididymis and make sure you don't misspell it. So what is going on with those structures? Let me open the other one as I'm telling you about those. So the sperm cells are made in the testes and then they will, um, once they're made in the testes, they don't move. Uh, yet, they do have their flagellum, their tail, but they cannot move yet. So they will spend some time in the epididymis where they will acquire the ability to move. And um, they will be moved from the epididymis into the vas deferens. And from the vas deferens, they'll be moved to the urethra. So that's their little story. Along the way, there are several glands that will... Uh, I'd be adding their different secretions to the um, the sperm cells and that will form the semen. So these glands, you don't need to know them uh, but you'll, for the dissection, but you'll see them on uh, during the chapters on um, reproductive systems. So here I'm exposing the other testes here. Oops. You can see some scrotum left, that white part. And then um, it's still surrounded by scrotal layers. It's 
it's really not a fun part to do there we go this one came out nicely okay so i'm gonna cut the rest of screws away because we don't need to see that here So here again, we see the testes. So I'm really insisting because that part gives you a lot of trouble. So let me turn it this way so you see it really well. All right, so here the nice little testes in one piece. The epididymis, right? And I'm gonna clean up more so you can see that the epididymis will meet the vast difference actually it's like all in one structure there's a lot of connective tissues and that make it a bit hard sometimes to uh, find your way through all that. That's why you need to practice so you know what is relevant and what is not. Okay. So we have the testis, the left one here that I the exposed with the epididymis. Then if we keep following the epididymis here, even though it's not well <laughs> shown. We have, we follow it, you can see the, those pipes here, it becomes the vast difference. And that's the one we could see going almost under the, the bladder to go to the urethra. And then we see this other one that goes upwards. So like this, and that's the spermatic cord. So they are bundled together here. Um, and to differentiate the two is basically that the spermatic cord will go up, whereas the vas deferens goes down um, to the urethra in the penis. So lots of scrotum and blood as well here. Okay, so if you've seen the male, Practice a lot. It's not the easiest, uh, but it's not impossible. Practice the spelling as well for uh, those male reproductive structures. They tend to be a little tricky to spell. And um, once we're, we're done with our specimen, so we see it again here, a whole pig, it's still tied to the um, pan, to the tray. So. We don't leave any pieces in there because we're going to rinse this tray and we don't want all those to get into the sink and clog it. So we have to dispose of all this very carefully. These are preserved specimens. We can't throw them in the regular garbage. So what we do, we uh, take them out. We don't need to untie them. We can just take the strings out. If we're going to reuse the pigs, we can just put them like this in a plastic bag that we tie and label for the, the following week. If we're done with them, we still put them like this in a bag that will be disposed of carefully by the technicians, not in the regular trash can. So thank you for to those little pigs for their service. They really um, learned, t taught a lot to us. We learned a lot and um, they were not wasted. <laughs> then we take off our gloves carefully and clean up. Then put our gloves back, rinse the pan, rinse the tools. Uh, and once everything is clean, we can say it's a wrap.